Hello and welcome to If You Love This Planet. My guest today is Arnie Gunderson, an energy advisor with Fair Winds Associates, a company who provide research analysis and paralegal services around environmental and energy issues. An independent nuclear engineering and safety expert, Arnie provides testimony on nuclear operations, reliability, safety and radiation issues to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, to congressional and state legislatures and government agencies and officials throughout the US, Canada and internationally. Arnie Gunderson has been a leading voice globally about the impact of the Fukushima nuclear disaster and he joins us now. Welcome again, dear Arnie Gunderson. Hi, thanks, Helen. Thanks for having me. Well, um, we will first do Fukushima. Um, I want you to bring us up to date now on what is currently going on there about radiation releases both to the air and to the sea um, and your Mm -hmm. prognosis for the future about what is going to happen there. So let's start at the beginning. What's happening now? Okay, well let's um, let's talk about um, the condition of each of the, the reactors. And so what the um, what the conclusion is is that fine pieces of nuclear fuel mm-hmm. have escaped the containment and are lying as a powder on the bottom of the torus room. The only thing that can account for exposures that high is is high small particles of of nuclear fuel that have. Um, um, that have settled out as the uh, as the water um, the water calmed down. But is so, uh, are they in water? Uh, these... Yes, they're underwater. Yes, they're underwater. Okay, but they're lying on the concrete. You know, the big question is how the heck do you decommission something like that? You know, Twenty or thirty years from now, this radiation is still going to be yeah a um, hundred lethal. times lethal. Lethal. Level. Yep. So, yes. So I think they get to the point where. You know, they throw some concrete over the top of it and come back in 300 years. So this is uh, um, not something that I can figure out how one would um, would clean up. You might just uh, be better off from the personnel exposure to um, to seal it and and wait for it to decay in three or four or five hundred years. But Arnie, next. where did these particles come from? Because the fuel's melted, is it, in Unit Two, um, and it's in a sort of corium mass, you know, how did all these particles get to the bottom of the torus, which is a donut-shaped... Uh, uh, they actually escaped the torus, and that's that's what's fascinating. The torus is still part of the containment. Oh. These are outside the containment in the torus room, which is a building that surrounds that donut. Oh. Um, so, yeah, in Unit 2, it's quite clear that the torus, the junction between the torus and the and the, what we call the dry bulb, the, the dry part of the containment, failed. And so there's been a breach of the containment in Unit 2. And um, um, so it, it seems like as they, as they flood the containment, um, that water becomes in contact directly with this fuel because uh-huh. the fuel rods have disintegrated, and it gets carried out and deposited on the floor in the building next to it. Now, is Unit 2 where they had the MOX fuel with plutonium, or is that Unit 3? Unit 3 had the MOX fuel, but mm. it only had 30 bundles of MOX fuel. Mm. Now, but the, the more important thing on the, on the plutonium is that all of the reactors had plutonium in them because all of them had been operating. And, of course, the uranium-238 becomes plutonium-239 when it absorbs a, a neutron. So there was um, uh, close to a ton of plutonium in each of those reactors um, within the fuel bun, not in a single location, but you know, scattered throughout the fuel. So there is plutonium-239 in all four reactors uh, as a result of the fact that the fuel was irradiated. A ton of plutonium in each reactor? Yes. So that's four tons of plutonium? Yes. My, my yes. God. Yeah, it's a big number, and, and of course you and I know how how dangerous small quantities of plutonium can be. So, yeah, that, that again makes the cleanup that much more one important and two that much more difficult. What's in the air and what's in the water? Yeah, um, there's there's not a lot in the air. Um, you'll, you'll see those reactors steaming still. They're giving off gas. 
Unit 1, of course, has a cover on it, so most of the gas is captured. Units 2 and 3 don't. So whatever uh, steam is coming out of the building is carrying some radiation. Um, nowhere near what happened in the first week, month, etc. but there is some radiation going out airborne. The, the biggest problem is what's in the water. Um, the, the buildings continue to leak into the groundwater. But on top of that, the entire prefecture, in fact, you know, most of northern Japan is contaminated. And now that contamination is reaching the rivers, and we're seeing freshwater fish with um, uh, contamination levels over 2,000 becquerels per kilogram, 2,000 disintegrations per second in every uh, kilogram of, of meat in the fish. So I think we're going to see that. You know, for, for years to come, uh, we're going to see contaminated um, fish in the Pacific and freshwater fish in Japan. 